I'm Dakota, welcome back into the Techies world. And this week it begins a whole new series and it's gonna be focusing on this big guy. That is right, this week it is the beginning series of the Power Mac G4 conversion video. Now, if you had watched my update video, kind of move the big guy kind of over here, give me a little bit more room, you can see me a little better now. And uh, if you watched the update video that I posted a couple weeks ago, uh, you'll know that I'm working on building this Power Mac into a file server. And uh, so this is going to be the first part of turning this old Power Mac G4 into a file server. So in this machine, we are going to bump it up to a full two gigabytes of RAM. And we are also going to install a fresh load of Mac OS X uh, onto this machine as well to get it ready for the drives that we're ultimately going to install inside of this machine. Now this video can also be used for turning any other Mac into a file server as well, whether that be an old uh, PowerPC based Mac or maybe even one of the new Intel uh, based Macs as well. Now for a file server, I've ultimately chosen to use this Power Mac G4. And the sole reason I've decided to use this machine is because this is the Gigabit Ethernet model. This is the mid-2000 model. It was released in 2000. And uh, this actually has Gigabit Ethernet built onto the motherboard. And that is important because if you're using, because if you're going to set up any computer as a server, you need to make sure it has Gigabit Ethernet, not 10100. And the reason for that is because 10100 runs at a slower speed, therefore you'll have a big bottleneck when it comes to transferring data. However, with Gigabit Ethernet, there is no limitation and uh, it runs very, very fast. So that's the reason if you're looking at building an older Mac or any other PC for that matter, if you have a Mac or even a PC into a file server, you need to make sure it has Gigabit Ethernet, not 10100. So without further ado, let's get into it. First off, we're going to upgrade the RAM. It couldn't be easier to gain access into the machine. Steve Jobs was once quoted as saying that this is the best access story in the business because it's called a door. And now we have full access to every component within the system. Note these four slots here on the logic board. These slots are the RAM slots. Each slot can hold a maximum of a 512 megabyte module, which will ultimately max out this machine at two gigabytes. These are the RAM modules that we're going to be using today. Four sticks of 512 megabyte PC133 RAM running at 333 megahertz. It doesn't matter what speed you use, any speed should work. As you notice, there already is a 512 megabyte module inside of this computer. However, I'm gonna go ahead and replace it just so that way I can keep consistency within the bus speed of the RAM modules. Replacing the RAM modules couldn't be easier. Just pull out on these levers on each side of the RAM module and then pull up on the module to remove it. Note which way the module came out so that way you know which way to put the new module back in. When installing the new RAM modules, you do need to use a little bit of force so the module will seat perfectly down into the slot. However, do not use too much force here. And then when you're done, just close the door. And now we're gonna check to make sure that the RAM is working perfectly. As you see, this computer already has a load of Mac OS X Tiger on it. So we're just gonna go into the system profiler and click on the memory section. And as you see, all four slots appear and all four RAM modules report back with the status of OK. As you just seen, this Power Mac already has a load of Mac OS X Tiger on it. However, I just so happen to have this copy of OS X Tiger server, which is way overkill for this particular purpose. But I have it, so what the hey, why not use it? While the machine is rebooting, we're going to hold down on the C key. This will instruct the computer to boot off of the optical drive and not the internal hard drive. And as you see, we're booted right into the installer. Before we install this, I'm gonna go ahead and completely erase this drive to give it a fresh load. To do that, we're gonna go up to Utilities and then Disk Utility. Once Disk Utility launches, you'll see all of the connected media on the left-hand pane of the window. In this case, this hard drive has two partitions on it, one with a Mac OS X partition and one with a Mac OS IX partition. I'm just gonna let Tiger Server have the whole disk. To completely erase a hard drive, go ahead and click on the drive itself, which will be the top one in the list, and then click on the Erase tab. Make sure that the volume format is Mac OS Extended Journal, and then go ahead and give the new partition a name. In this case, I'm gonna name it to the standard Macintosh HD. In this case, there is no need to install a Mac OS 9 driver, so I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck that box, and then click the Erase button. This warning will pop up telling you that all data on all partitions will be erased. 
In this case, since that's what we want, we're going to go ahead and click Erase. The drive will then erase and then repartition. And now we're going to quit out of Disk Utility and then go back to the installer. Installing OS X Server is just about as simple as it would be installing regular Mac OS. There's a lot of buttons clicking Continue and agreeing to terms and all that stuff. There is really no need for this disk check, but I let it do it anyway. Once the check is done, it starts installing. Once the computer reboots, we're greeted with this welcome screen. Oddly enough, Mac OS X Server actually requires a serial number in order to work. So go ahead and enter your serial number here. And now let's set up the admin account. In this case, I'm just going to use administrator for the name just because it's simple. I'm also going to give this machine a network name. This is the name that every computer will see when it wants to connect to the server. I'll worry about setting up the network connection later once I have this down in the basement. Since I'm going to be using this as a file server, you'd want to make sure that standalone server is the one selected for the directory usage. And then I want to make sure that certain services are started when the machine starts up. In this case, I'm going to make sure the Apple file service is started up. Also with the Windows file service, since I'm also going to be sharing files with a Windows machine as well. I'll explain this in more detail in part two. Next, we're going to set up the time zone, which is fairly simple. And then once all the settings are configured, it'll boot us right into the desktop. All right, so there you go. That is part one of the Power Mac G4 file server conversion project. And uh, again, you know, just to recap, we just basically maxed out the RAM to a full two gigabytes and we installed a copy of Mac OS X. Now, as I said in the video, installing OS X server uh, on a machine just to use as a file server is quite overkill. OS X server really wasn't designed to be used for file server usage. It was really designed to be used as an actual server server for like Apple's XServe line, which Apple hasn't made in like, I don't know, seven years, I think. The XServe was Apple's actual rack mount server. OS X server on a home file server is really overkill. But um, like I said, I have a copy of it, so I might as well use it. However, that might change. I may revert this machine back down to just standard OS X Tiger. And the reason for that is because I'm having an issue trying to figure out how to share volumes over the network. Um, I know it's not done through system preferences. It's done through the server admin app. I can't find anywhere in the server admin how to share uh, mounted volumes over the network. I don't know how to do it and I can't find it. So. Um, Basically, this is kind of like a call for help. <laughs> and uh, if you know how to share mounted volumes that are connected to the computer over the network uh, using OS X server, please tell me <laughs> because I really don't know how and I can't find it. And if I can't get it to do what I want, then I have no use of having it on there. So I'll just take it off and put standard OS X back on. But in the next part, I'm going to uh, basically show you, hopefully, if I can figure it out, uh, using how to share drives um, using OS X Server Tiger over the network. And basically, if that doesn't work, I'll just show you how to do it through standard OS X, which is basically all you need anyway. So again, with that, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. If you'd like to see part two, or if you want to see anything else from the Techies world, make sure you click that little subscribe button down below. And again, make sure that when you're clicking that subscribe button, you click that little bell icon to turn on notifications. Then that way you'll be notified every single time I upload a new video. Follow all of those social media accounts. Check out the website. And I will see you guys with the next tech video. Thank you for watching. Significant, you're missing it. Reaction too efficient, cause the beat is so explicit in my dreams, and I'll elicit it. Not enough to see it, scratch it, read it, claw it, beat it, beat it, first the beat, and then the animal that needs it.